Good evening and welcome again to Ideas at Work and Beyond. There's a lot going on in my head right now, as, as there usually is, but tonight even more so. We have this on a federal level, this Obamacare, nationalized health care reform bill. And Al Robinson is going to be a big part of the show tonight because he has some very definite ideas on this, uh, on this federal health care bill that's uh, pending. My thought for the evening, though, is the word to deem, to deem. Uh, because it appears as if the Democrats uh, in the Congress don't have enough votes to pass this bill, so that what they're going to do by way of parliamentary sleight of hands is they will just simply deem it as being law. No one has to vote on it. No one has to okay it. They'll just simply deem it as being law. And I'm wondering if when you really ponder uh, your health care, uh, the federal government, the mounting deficits, the basic inefficiency of the federal government on pretty much everything they've touched. Well, just today I heard that they want the Postal Service to just deliver the mail five days a week instead of six in an effort to save money. In everything that they've touched, it seems as if they've uh, basically made a mess of it, and yet we're going to deem that the federal government is going to take over one-sixth of our economy, and we're hoping for the best that it's going to be both less expensive and a better service. This concerns me. This concerns me greatly. And we're going to be talking about this tonight. We have a couple of people going to be uh, calling in. Um, uh, candidate Rob Simmons, who is uh, running for the Republican nomination for the United States Senate, uh, should be calling in. And then Rob Merkel, uh, he's, uh, he is a candidate for the 4th Congressional District. Uh, he was on the four-way debate we had a few uh, weeks back, and he's going to be joining us in the second half of the program um, should everything work out. Now, Rob, of course, went to Notre Dame. Notre Dame was knocked out of the NCAA uh, this afternoon in, in, in the first round. Wow. So uh, hopefully Rob's not watching right now, but uh, if you're going to call in, let's give Rob a little space. He needs to recover, needs to recoup, because Notre Dame got hammered. Messed up my whole um, bracket. I, I know, it was tough. <laughs> so there's Rob Simmons. Um, you know, uh, basically... Uh, um, uh, James Bond meets Howdy Doody, and uh, and we're going to have him calling in, and uh, and we hope him the best. Actually, he, he too has had a bit of a rough week because Linda McMahon, in a more recent poll, is 10 points ahead, which goes to show that if you have a lot of money that you made from men running around in tights, faking fights with each other, uh, and you can buy a lot of uh, political mailers you can do pretty good so we'll see there's a long road till november um uh, but we're going to see that there's one other thing i'd like to share with you um actually a couple things uh, i had the privilege of uh, meeting the archbishop of uh, new york archbishop dolan and uh, it was a thrill for us i don't know if they have those uh pictures we can put those up just want to share those uh, Archbishop Dolan, I found him to be a, uh, just a delightful man, a man of the cloth, a man who I'm sure would be against this health care bill since by some people's reckoning uh, there, there are uh, federally funded abortions on 37 different places in this uh, health care bill, which is uh, 2,400 pages. That's the Archbishop. I was basically telling him a joke right there. Um, I forget what the joke was, but he seemed to get a kick out of it. And, uh, and that was a real thrill. Uh, there's my uh, lovely wife in the, with the scarf and some friends I went to college with. And uh, anyways, there's the Archbishop. I'm not sure how that relates, but I'm an exhibitionist at heart. That is a political cartoon talking about o Obamacare. The caption reads, that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. And the guy says, psst, it's a suppository. Uh, do the math on that one, uh, but it's pretty rough. And, uh, and the administration, the administering of said um, a vessel could be as early as Sunday. So that's all by way of uh, introduction. I am thrilled and delighted that Al Robinson is here in his capacity as, uh, as co-host of this fledgling enterprise. How's it going? Uh, it's not going good. Not going uh, good for you? No, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little apprehensive Aww. because I think... Poor baby. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> I, I think at a federal level, 
we're about to see the government take over health care and yeah, that's uh, what you've been saying for the last uh, year. And and uh, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the future of America, and I'm also concerned about the process by which this is taking place, which is it really isn't an up and down vote. It certainly is anything. Uh, uh, it certainly is not bipartisan, um, but it's going to be deemed to be the law of the land, and then we're just going to have to well to quote your fearless leader Nancy Pelosi, when she says. Uh, um, she says, and I quote, uh, but we have to pass this bill so that we can find out what's in it, away from mm -hmm. the fog of controversy. So it used to be at the federal level that they would pass bills before they read them. I think this might be one of the first bills that they're actually passing before they've actually written it. Well, look, what do you want to do? You, you want to, since we've been yammering and yammering about this health care stuff for such a long time, we got some real cool stuff that also come out, came out also. We got the Quinnipiac reports, the poll numbers, and the Senate race. As well as the governor's race, you want to take well, a small okay. break from there. Let, 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 to be to be stuff. perfectly transparent, <clears throat> we talked earlier today. Yes, we did. And and uh, on your blog, uh, Hat City blog, uh, you you mentioned that I have been in intelligently conversing about the health care bill and bringing up that's facts. What, that's what I said. It's something along those lines. You sure about that? I'm a little I'm a little <laughs> vague on exactly how you how you well, put that it. Ain't what I said. <clears throat> but you said I was <laughs> providing profound, crystal clear insight on the health care bill for weeks and weeks and weeks, yeah. and that you were going to set me straight. And so, uh, well, I, I'm, set me straight. I'm, where where I'm, do I got I'm this wrong? I'm going to set you straight in many ways. But well, let's start with health care. You want to go with health care? You want to yeah. go with the Quinnipiac polls? Because these numbers are great. <clears throat> You're you Republicans. No, give me, give me five. Give me, Real uh, bad. How long was... Linda McMahon? Linda McMahon, sex and drugs and, <laughs> and, and, and garbage on TV and, and, and polluting our children with, like, violence and stuff for years. She, violence. She, she's your nominee. You feel good that she's your nominee. The whole... Beating Rob Simmons. <laughs> Rob Simmons, I'm feeling a seasoned professional, I'm politician, feeling right. the man, military the man, won, man. The man won two bronze stars. Losing, they don't, to, they don't, they don't give those out at the bottom of Cracker Jack boxes. Losing to bronze the bronze stars. Losing, he defended yeah. our country. Losing to the person who brought tits and knives to our television screens for over 20 years, and you guys have no problem with that. Are they allowed to say TNA on TV like that? That might. It's that? okay. All right, good. It's a donkey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so, so that, you feel okay with that? All right, that's your that's your person. Okay, that's your but I, I I I don't allow the assumption within the question, and that is that it's over. As you know, a Quinnipiac a poll, a Quinnipiac poll came out, and the one you're talking about, Linda McMahon, is ten points ahead. Ten points ahead. So you're ready to put a fork in Rob Simmons and say he's done. Well, okay, look, what did I tell you about Rob Simmons during the debate? We, we talked about after he did the, the old gubernatorial, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, well, you know, the well, Senate tell, debate. Yeah, well, what, well, how did you feel I he did in the debate? I said that Rob Simmons, for all the fire that he had here on this show, talking yeah. about topics, passionately talking about the issues, uh, took a couple of swipes at, at Linda McMahon, and, which I thought were absolutely legitimate because I yeah. think Linda McMahon is a god-awful candidate. I mean, awful, awful. This woman is done, and, and wait, the way that she... Gained her money and built her empire off the lives of kids who wrestled constantly and with, with pain and drugs and all that crap that went into their bodies, died constantly. I, mean, I can't even count the numbers of wrestlers that died under her watch while she was raking in millions mm -hmm. and didn't care about them and didn't provide health care, by the way. This person is your nominee, your Republican nominee, is supposed to be, you know, representing the Republican Party going into the Senate. It's a disgrace. So w w you, you got Rob Simmons who, like I said, is a seasoned person, uh, uh, somebody I somewhat respect to a certain extent, although I'm a progressive, and we don't see eye-to-eye -eye on a lot of things, but what, Robbie's pretty good on some issues and, and way off the deep end on some other issues. This guy is losing by 10 points to a nobody with no political experience whatsoever who did nothing but dump her money into a campaign race. Uh, you, you can't feel good about that. What does she bring into this race? Okay, let me respond. First uh, of all... No, you want to put your mic oh, on, but geez, no, I just, I just, it's just, it, what does she bring into this race at all? That that it, it's it's embarrassing. Linda it's embarrassing. McMahon, Linda McMahon. She, she I, these, these nice little, you know how much these things cost? Well, that is that's there, actually in it? That, that's actually Rob Simmons. I mean, oh, it's uh, Rob. Yeah, Dave, if you well, have his, well, he stepped up to the four colors after yeah, a while. Yeah, he's now, he's, huh? he's he's bringing it a little bit. Uh, but okay, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to advocate for Linda McMahon? Do you want me to defend I, I, I what the Republicans are putting, putting out there? Can, how can any Republican, the Family Values Republican Party, how can any Republican defend Linda McMahon or the way she raised her money or her background? It, 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 better yet. Before she became a Republican, you know, when she was actually a Democrat and donating to Joe Courtney's campaign and all, they had nothing but bad things to say about Linda McMahon. 
nothing but bad things to say. There you go. Nothing but bad things to say. Her, and more importantly, once again, the way she raised or accumulated her money. Sex, backyard wrestling. You know how many kids got injured through backyard wrestling due to what happened with the WWE and the WWF? Mm -hmm. uh, sex, violence, um, simulated sex on TV. Necrophilia on TV. This was this wasn't that long ago. Two or three years ago, this was going on. Necrophilia. That's dead people. Is that what exactly? Uh, you know, hey, I'll, it's I'll, a family show. We're still on the. the hey, you know. All right. But that, okay. This went on. And how can that person be your nominee? First of all, Linda McMahon is not as of right now. Uh, your front uh, March. Your front uh, okay, front right. Front right. Look, she's got. She's coming. She's coming to the political game as a complete outsider. She's coming in with a with a strong message of being uh, fiscally conservative, wanting to clean house in Washington, and she's putting a lot of her chips on the table. She spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on direct mail piece uh, on direct mail pieces that are in my mailbox, you right. know, six days a week, and and that has to you know uh, raise her name identification, I and and I think it was reflected in this poll. I understand, but it's, but it's, I mean the it's game awful. is just it's beginning. Awful. The game is just it, beginning, and I think as people look at it. I think we have a very valid candidate in in, uh, in Rob Simmons, a decorated war veteran. I'd still like to know, and if he calls in tonight, remind me to ask him how he won his two bronze stars. Um, he, did, he did 10 years on the front lines with the CIA, very strong on national defense. Mm -hmm. These are just four quick issues that he, he uh, differentiates himself from Linda McMahon. Once he, he was against the bailout. Um, uh, Linda McMahon apparently was was for it. He's for small businesses. He was the the first Connecticut business advocate. He's, he has a career in national security, whereas Linda McMahon thinks that it might not be that bad an idea to have the terrorist trials in, in New York City. And also, he's a grassroots Republican, whereas Linda McMahon and on on the brochure here, she's speaking at the College Democrats podium, and, let's and not, she's been and giving a lot of money to none other than Rob Emanuel. And let's not and let's not forget that during the last weeks of the campaign, in which Rob barely lost to Joe Courtney, who gave a bunch of money to Joe Courtney weeks before it was over. All right. So, McMahon. so there but, you go. But, but, I mean, but, 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 why are you saying she's our candidate? She's one she is of your a front choice. Runner. That, she is a front that, runner. And I think that this individual is a front runner. She Again. is a front runner in one poll, and I think that's a result of spending, I don't know how many countless of millions of dollars on, on her direct the official mail piece. poll of Connecticut. Let, but listen, let me, let me say this. If Linda McMahon, disgrace. if it should turn out that Linda McMahon is the Republican candidate, I think she can do a much better job for small business and the economy than than uh, um, your candidate. How so? Blumenthal. Well, How Blumenthal, so? first of all, no, is no, 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 no. Let's talk about Linda. How can she do better than Blumenthal? Okay, I'll tell you. Again, I'll, tell you, she I'll made, tell you. She made a business from selling sex, violence, mm -hmm. and garbage to kids. Okay. And hundreds of wrestlers died under her watch, and she didn't give two bits about them. Okay, tell me how that's, a, how that's a good business. I'll tell you, and you might want to get a box of Kleenex because I'm about to share a very touching, oh, okay. a touching story with you. Linda McMahon, when she started out, and this is a this is an American success story. This this uh, this uh, rustling, you know, you might not like it, but it is an American success story. You it is. Be kidding me. Listen, you could say you could say the same thing about the NFL. You say, wow, these people, you know, they they shatter their bones and everything. How can you make money off of men going around and hitting themselves and hurting? They have themselves? a health care plan. Well, I it, okay. I guess in this you, in this you business, you don't even employees. They're, 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 they're independent contractors. She calls them so she can get around that stuff. Well, hey, come on. Okay. This is why I think Linda McMahon, if she's the candidate, I'm going to vote for her. It's because she started a business and started it from the ground up, and she actually went bankrupt twice. Her and her, and her husband went, went bankrupt twice running a business. She knows what it means to, to meet a payroll. She knows what it means really? to put her money at risk. You see it on her yacht? Have you seen her yacht? Yeah, payroll? but you know, yeah, where did she come from? Marty, where did she come Marty, from? I know, a lot, you... I know a lot more about the WWE slash WWF slash World... The Worldwide Wrestling Federation, the WWF of the 70s. I have a family that goes back in wrestling at least 30 to 40 years. All right. Coming from Tennessee. I understand about wrestling. Don't sell me this stuff about uh, 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 going well, bankrupt I, I, and all look, that stuff. I understand, about, I, I understand think, about the history of wrestling and about the WWE more than you do. So look, if you want to sell me that, I think, go I ahead. think the WWE I'll, I'll, is, a, is a legitimate business. I do. You said you're, you you're people. Your, watch, would you let your kids watch that stuff? Sure, I let my kids watch really? it. Hulk Hogan, a Hulkamania, bra and panty matches, necrophilia, I grew up in Chicago. We used to have the Bruiser and the Crusher, and I come home from church and watch these guys in tights. I hit understand. Each other. 
that I, mean, I don't know. I, I the seem AWA, to have survived the it. AWA, the NWA, all that stuff is a lot different from what I am talking about right here. It's right. completely, completely okay. different. This ain't, your, this ain't your daddy's or grandfather's <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> okay, yet, well, all right? I like the Bruiser and the Crusher, and they'd have Come on, I've been around for a while. All right, but, uh, but this is my point. All right. Okay, if you can get beyond, you know, uh, uh, the, the type of business, my, the point is that she has, and by the way, I like Rob Simmons. He's, he's my dog in this fight. But I'm saying if, if Linda McMahon comes out and she's a Republican nominee, mm -hmm. I'll have no qualms whatsoever pulling the lever for Linda McMahon okay. because I think she understands the private sector. I she think she understands yeah. what it means to put her money at risk and run a business. And the touching story I was telling you about was she got in a, she was going bankrupt and she was pregnant and she had to get in her car to go down to the court <laughs> right. to, for yeah. the bankruptcy filing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so she's pregnant and she has all these court papers and she yeah. goes out to her car and her car is flat. Yeah. The tire's flat. Yeah, she, so she has to call a tow truck truck the tow truck guy comes over he says i gotta get to court i gotta file these bankruptcy papers so the tow truck driver says well i don't got time to change the tire hop in the tow truck they get in the tow truck they drive down to court she's coming out like eight months pregnant with the papers and her husband's waiting and she says that's a picture you getting out of a tow truck with your bankruptcy papers pregnant did she, did she come to the ridgefield republican town she did. Told she, that did. Story? she told that story yeah. i'm a sucker for a good story you really are okay. You're a big so, sucker for so that one. that's why i you know i i think that uh that essentially what we have with the Democratic nominee, like, well, certainly, I mean, Dodd had the decency to, to drop out because I think of the corruption and everything else. We, we delineated yeah, that yeah. on this program. So yeah, he, yeah, he, he yeah, saw the writing right. on the wall, so right. out he goes. Right. That's good. And then we have another career politician career that's going to come politician. in there who says that uh, uh, Un lawsuits actually produce jobs. Uh, unlike your man, Rob Simmons, who's not a career politician. But look, here's, well, here's some great... Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Here's some great stuff here. Blumenthal gets a, this is what, this is the Q poll. Q poll right here. Blumenthal gets a 79 to 13% approval rating, continuing a 10 month string of approval ratings of 78 points or higher. Okay? 78 points or higher. That's among both parties and independents. Now, here's the breakdown. Uh, Mr. Blumenthal would beat McMahon 61 to 28. 61 to 28. Beat Simmons, 6226. Oh, I'm gonna get these in. Blumenthal beat McMahon, what would it be? 6226. Uh huh. All right. And we'll pretty much mop the forward shift, who is <laughs> Mr. Irrelevant, 64 to 21. I like no? Chip. Yeah. He's got a lot of energy. Yeah. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Invest in the China, that's Chip. Have gold, keep your gold overseas. Moron. Hey, well, he predicted. He, you can tell. Call him oh, a moron. He, he, he was the one who predicted the uh, yeah, uh, the uh, um, subprime yeah. bubble bursting. Yeah. I'm he still, I'm, the I'm dot com still bubble waiting burst. for Mr. Schiff to do an interview on a Connecticut television station so we can ask him some real tough questions. Did, well, didn't they all just going, have a televised debate? They had a debate. The forum. What's that? It's garbage. That's true. Come they on, should please. come in here. I think the. I think we have the oh, best. Oh, I would love for him to come in here. But look, uh, look at these numbers. There's a reason why nobody's paying. There's nobody. There's a reason why nobody's paying attention to Connecticut anymore. This Senate race is done. Done. Okay, so how do you lose, how do you lose that many points? In okay, that this is time? this is how you do. It. This is how you do. It. Tell me that. Okay, you pass a a uh, a health care plan or a health care bill without even having a vote. You is just de no no no. Follow, follow, my follow my thinking. Follow my thinking. What's your thinking? My this is my this is how Scott Brown got in. That's my thing. That's how Scott Brown took uh, not took Please. Barney Frank's district in Massachusetts. Scott Brown and that is because people Brown, were Scott so Brown ticked who, about Scott this Brown health care plan. Scott Brown who voted for the Massachusetts health care plan. Scott Brown, who voted in favor of a Massachusetts health care plan. By the way, I think That's he should be referred to as more Senator Scott Brown. When he was state senator or a state rep or a state official, yeah. he voted in favor of the Massachusetts health care plan, which is m a million times more stringent okay. than anything the federal government is putting through. So you're asking our highly educated viewing audience to say that the reason Scott Brown got elected in Massachusetts no, because I'm of his saying, liberal stance saying, on health care. Is that again, what you I'm saying again that he voted in favor of the Massachusetts health care plan. It's okay. a fact. That was, Mitt Rom fact. that was Mitt Romney, Mitt, by the way. Oh, Mitt Romney's yeah. plan get, to you, make sure every single person was forced to have health care insurance. Forced. Yeah, that was that was Mitt, uh, Mitt Romney. Is yeah, he a Republican? He's a Republican. He's a he, might, he might he's be a the Mormon too, right? He, he's a Mormon as well. well. Let's not talk about Mormons today. We can go all day. What's the matter with Mormons? Well, okay. What, you got, what, are you are you being religiously intolerant of Mormons? Mormons? What's the matter with Mormons? I, I'm not. I'm not going to go down that road. I mean, uh, Orrin Hatch is a Mormon. Hey, Mormons. Hey, Mormons. Mormons. Huh? 
Right. I got nothing but love for Mormons. You can Didn't have BYU, Who did BYU beat today? Didn't they bump off Florida or something like that? Did they? I believe they did. Oh, my bracket is so messed I'm up. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, yeah. this. So the, no, the, the Catholics got in trouble. Notre Dame lost. Uh, the Mormons are doing good because BYU beat Florida. But uh, well, I don't know if this uh, is a... I, I think you're going to have problems with that. I think okay, but you asked me. Yeah, let me that. finish my question. You, no, please, answer. please, go ahead. You asked me how we overcome this, and this is how we overcome How do you overcome it. that? This is, 50, I think this 50, is how the Republican Party overcomes all 50, of this. 56 points? Is I think that people are going to be so upset if this health care plan passes without even a vote. They just deem it to be so that they're going to say, we told you in New Jersey we didn't want this. We told you in Virginia we didn't want this. We mm -hmm. told you in Massachusetts we didn't want to have mm -hmm. this. You're still not listening, and you voted again. You didn't even vote. You just deemed it mm -hmm. into place. And now the IRS is going to be expanded, and they're going to be confiscating money from everyone, so they have to are being forced to buy these health care plans, and we're expanding the role of government and everything else, and people are going to say enough's enough, and they're going to throw everyone out. That's yeah. what I think is going to happen. Yeah. It's a when was the last time a Republican that was a senator in Connecticut? What's the last time that happened? Well, I don't know. When was the last time there was a Republican senator in Massachusetts? I'm just asking about Connecticut. I don't live in Massachusetts. Well, about, you, I mean, about, if yeah. they can get elected in Massachusetts, they can get sure elected in Connecticut. Get yeah. Yeah. I mean, you ever heard of, uh, of uh, Prescott right. Bush? He was a Republican, wasn't he? Were you even alive then? No, but I go to the Bush dinner, so that makes uh, <laughs> that, that, that makes it okay. But Prescott oh, Bush come uh, on. was a Republican and come he was on. a senator. Come on. So wait, then, so what do you got like this democratic F, sense of entitlement? During, it wasn't even F and radio during okay, that look, time. For those of you viewing at home, I hope you're listening to this because this is elitist, left-wing sense of entitlement. Oh, there he goes. You know why Blumenthal is going to be the next senator from uh, Connecticut? <laughs> because when was the last time we had a Republican? No, I, all I of you just I sit said, there. You vote Democrat, and big government's going to take care of everything. You rating. just keep paying your taxes, keep paying, 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 because nanny state is going to take care of everything. No, no, vote, vote for Miss Bra and Panties. That's what we want in the office. We want the lady who brought Brian Panties right, look, and steroids. I am not going to sit here there. on this television show panties. and allow you to be, you know, uh, uh, anti-religion. You know, taking on, and, and now <laughs> I'm you're against, being... I'm against TNA now? No, now you're sexist. You're <laughs> being sexist. sexist. Yeah. I'm defending women. I don't want TNA on TV. I don't want my kids watching that stuff. I don't want backyard wrestling. I don't want simulated sex. I don't want necrophilia on TV at 8 o'clock at night on a Monday. But you support that. You go for it. My man. <laughs> I'm uh, inclined to vote for Rob Simmons, and I hope you <laughs> By the way, if you want to join this three-ring circus, the phone number here is 203-792-4101. Oh 792-4101. Phone up, jump in. If you agree with me, by all means, jump in. I can use all the help I can get. You sure can. Okay, so the way you're going to see this whole thing is Blumenthal's the next senator. Might as not, why uh, as well not, not have I, a no, vote? No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not even worried about that right now. That's, that's fine. I'm looking at this, 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 this three-ring circus over there among the Republicans where Republicans in this state, the family value Republicans, are supporting Linda McMahon by 10% over a, a respectable politician in Rob Simmons. Hey, I think I, that's, I look, that's, that's outrageous. I like Rob Simmons. And, and but you I tell think, me I money think... talks now? That's, that's what it is, Republicans? Money talks? Well, money doesn't hurt. I mean, Money doesn't it, hurt. I understand it, money, money, does, money, money doesn't hurt. Money, does money get, doesn't hurt. Money does get your message out. Money doesn't and I hurt. think I think she is uh, she has got a platform of being fiscally conservative. Wait for where? Go where is that fiscally conservative? And she was just a Democrat just a couple of years ago. No, she, she supported Joe Courtney just a few no. years ago, and then suddenly she's fiscally conservative. Let and me why why why? Let me Where's explain. Where's all this money from? Let me explain. Okay, like, I, I'm a painting contractor. All right. Yeah. Okay. And there's this painting kind. There's this, this there's this right there's right this now. construction company. Yeah. You know who we did work for. And the owner of this construction company has this, you know, little fundraising thing. And he says, you know, we'd really like you to come out to this little fundraising thing. My wife's putting it on. She's putting it together. Won't you, you know, come out and pay 30 bucks to go to this thing? And, you know, you really like to do painting for this construction company. This is hypothetical, but work with me on this. I'm working with you. And, uh, and so, in the course of business, you go around and you, you go to this cocktail party, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, whatever. You just want to do painting for this construction company, so you go. Right. She's in business. This is her explanation. Okay, okay. don't shoot the messenger. No, no, her no. explanation is, well, in the course of doing business, we were asked to come to this fundraiser, that fundraiser, and we went. And, you know, that's, some, some, that's sometimes how business operates. Now, 
if she knew she was running for Senate 10 years later, she might have taken the high road and said, I will not dirty my hands with this. But that's her explanation for why she's donating money to, to Democrats. But why should it bother you that she's donating money to Democrats? Because you guys are so progressive and no, you're going to hey, take care of us. Hey, and the more money that are in wants, your coffers, the better able you will be to take care of give us. A buck, if she wants to give a buck to the Democrat, I don't have a problem with it. Rob Simmons is the person telling everybody that she's doing it. Rob Simmons is the person who's got the college Democrat photograph, which, by the way, was found by my left nut mag. And that's where he got that from. And put it on. Who was that? Social. You? Yeah, that's. I the, thought you had City Blog. I'm all over the place, man. I'm all over the place. <laughs> All right. That's it. Blog, my love. You, you, what, why is guys, it all this sexual innuendo with you? My left nutmeg. What's up with that? Where are you coming from with that? I don't know. You're the one talking about it. It's always well, You got weird. something on your mind today, bro. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. You're again, the one. I, the, my you know, my website just, is I'm, Marty I'm, Heiser. No, I, look. I, no, uh, your, your website is Rich. No, he's, no she, org. Said, she says uh, uh, wrong for donating to Democrats. Uh, tens of thousands of dollars given to the Democratic Party and Rob Emanuel. That bothers me. It's simply the cost of doing business, McMahon said Thursday night. And, Again, and, it, and Rob counters with that the loyal grassroots Republican. Rob has worked on the front lines of Republican politics for over 20 years, side by side with fellow grass, grassroots advocates like you. He's a longtime member of the Stonington Republican Town Committee and is a former chairman. Rob supports Republicans because he believes in our ideals, well, not just because he wants our nomination. Rob believes in our ideals. Look, look don't, come, don't come talk to me about it. Tell your Republican buddies about this stuff. I'm, I'm Again, for the, I'll say this for the last time. This woman made her money off the backs of hundreds of people who have died in the ring because of her negligence towards taking care of wrestlers in the, in the wrestling industry. There's going to be an individual coming down here uh, doing a book signing in Stanford. Hopefully I'll be able to do an interview with him that has a, um, a book that's done about um, Chris Benoit, mm -hmm. who's a person who was on steroids and freaked out mm -hmm. and killed his son, five-year-old son, and killed his wife and killed himself. Didn't shoot him or anything, choked him to death. Yeah. Because of Roy Rage. This person was wrestling, a, a top headlining wrestler under her watch. And that's just one out of hundreds and hundreds of wrestlers See the under movie, her watch. Uh, The Wrestler? That's a great movie. Yeah, that's good pretty, movie. pretty inaccurate. But look, that's how she made her money. That's mm -hmm. her background. That's where Rob Simmons. This goes back to the debate. I kind of well went off the deep end a mm -hmm. little, little bit with this, and I do apologize. But this is where I feel Rob Simmons did absolutely awful during the, G the Republican form. Mm -hmm. He didn't attack Linda McMahon on her background. He just looked like the basically. And I, all due respect to Rob, I like you, a good guy. He looked like mm -hmm. a deer in the headlights and did not do the targeted attacking that he needed to do. Now, he came in here and did, this, did the attack. He does the attacking in the mailers and stuff, mm -hmm. but he doesn't attack the person when you really need to on TV. And if you want to drive somebody's negatives up, you have to attack this person. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Linda McMahon's negatives are pretty damn high. Yeah. All right? And that's, that's not going to bode well. I'm going to tell you a conversation I had with a little birdie All right. this afternoon. The little birdie said that, uh, you know, what we need to do, as far as from Rob Simmons' point of view, is we need to get, the, we need to allow people to know Linda McMahon and to find out more. The more that's, that's right. they focus on Linda McMahon and, like you said, how she made the money, the better it is for Rob Simmons. So he said, what's the best way to do that? Well, she needs to be leading in the polls. Well, right now, the spotlight is going to be on Linda McMahon. And it's what you're saying, you know, all oh, this is just terrible how she made her money, that this isn't just good, red-blooded America. Atrocious. Look, it's I atrocious. like Hulk Hogan. I mean, I, you know, I, you, you can say there's you might a like Hulk undersized. Hogan, but a whole other host of wrestlers no, I, that not, have died. I'm not that... <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm... It's, it's sad. I'm not defending uh, steroids use. I'm not defending. And I've seen way, some of these videos. Hulk been... Hogan and Vince McMahon went to court, federal court, over the whole steroids use issue, mm -hmm. which is why they changed their from World Wrestling Federation to World Wrestling Entertainment. So they wanted to change to be called entertainment, so they can get away from the whole sports regulation nonsense. Mm -hmm. So they can continue their steroid use. Okay. I can go on again. Look, I have a big background in wrestling. I go back. A What's long, the story long with that? Like, what you had relatives who were in wrestling? I'm from. I was born in Tennessee. My parents are from Tennessee. We're from. Mm -hmm. we're, we're 50 to 60 miles away from Memphis. Uh -huh. Memphis wrestling is one of the biggest. So you had like uncles and people Jerry in your family. King, Jerry the King Lawler. Uh -huh. uh, um, and he the, was a wrestler. The, the hearts. Jerry the King Lawler was one of probably one of the most famous wrestlers. I'm sorry, I don't know Jerry the King Lawler. Well, well, I know Hulk Hogan, and then after that it gets a little Chicago, fuzzy. So right, right down the, the street. Bruiser, the Crusher, and, well, and you, you're, if you're from Chicago, not far away from Chicago is Minnesota, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, uh -huh. which is what comes into the. Uh, All right, well let me just ask your, your uncle Claire who was in it. What, is, what does he have to say about wrestling? Was wrestling very, very good to there's him? There's a difference between well, there's a difference between the wrestling of that time 
and this new sort of wrestling that that is just based on like again steroids, sexual exploitation, mm -hmm. um, demeaning of women on such a level that's just outrageous. Mm -hmm. I, the way they treated her her own, own daughter in the WWE. I can bring you yeah. back the video footage and show you that yeah. stuff. If you YouTube, it's, it's, if you it's, it's, YouTube it's, 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 Linda it's, McMahon, you're gonna see some pretty see freaky some stuff. Freaky, freaky uh. stuff. It's, that's a different type of wrestling. I'd still and take again, I'd still take the Republican not, over the Democrat in, in Washington because well, basically they're taxing us into the poorhouse and they're trying to take over everything well, from health care to everything. Think else. Linda McMahon is a Republican. Okay, fine. You, see, you look, do, do what you got to do. I, I'd rather, I'm I'd just rather saying, have I'm just saying the, again, I can't the, uh, understand how this woman's left 10 points in the polls. I think it's a disgrace. And not only is it a disgrace, no. it, it shows that there's a problem with Rob Simmons' campaign, that they, don't effectively, they didn't effectively go after this person when they had an opportunity to do so. And Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it it's over. It ain't over till it's over. All right, on that note, um, we're going to take a break. And when we come oh. back, I have an on very good authority that a very sad former graduate of Notre Dame, yes, <laughs> yes, the college basketball team that got bumped out by that, that college basketball Tore powerhouse. Who, my who, beat, up. who beat Notre Old Dame? Dominion. Old, Old Dominion. Dominion. Actually, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Those. Oh, so anyways, uh, Rob Merkel will be joining us to set us straight on what the heck's going on with this health care thing and, uh, and everything else. So Rob, Rob will be joining us after this short break, which I have no idea what they're going to show except maybe a promo for professional wrestling at Some the Dan Arena. Wrestling. Come on, let's go. Their numbers are growing more and more. More than a year ago. More than a decade ago. More people now living in this state than nearly any state in the Union. One out of every eight people in America one out of every ten families in America. One out of every six children in America. Thirty-three million Americans struggling just to remain standing. Thirty-three million Americans teetering on the brink of hunger, sickness, hardship, uncertainty. Thirty-three million Americans in these United States descending into poverty and as their futures fall so does our nations no just just save it for the i wanted two other oh i'm sorry hello welcome back to ideas and work <laughs> you know this is live television and if you've ever doubted that uh, i just proved it um we are joined now by rob merkel Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure, Is it a tough night for you seeing us out in Notre Dame got bumped out of the NCAA in the first round? Well, you know, uh, being from Notre Dame, you have to live with a certain level of disappointment in the sports teams on occasion. Yeah. So, you know, even, even the football team has been on a bit of a. You know how bad you messed up my bracket today? Hey, I was, football guy. I was a football guy. I did <laughs> box, football, no basketball. <laughs> I think BYU lost too. But you are running for uh, for Congress in the 4th Congressional District. That That's is Jim correct. Himes' district right That's now. Correct. Jim Himes is so deep in the uh, uh, Congressman Pelosi's, Speaker Pelosi's purse that you can, you know, taste the Wrigley's gum in there. And uh, and, and uh, if you are bo elected the, the, the U.S. Congress, what would you do differently? And how do you see this, uh, this health care bill that's going through right now? What the heck are they doing? It's really beginning to make my head hurt. Explain. I think it's hurt a lot of people's heads, Marty, and the reason being is that 53% uh, of the population doesn't want this bill. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they talk about how, you know, a majority of people want health care reform. They do, but they don't want the government to take it over. Mm -hmm. And the bill that's on the table in the House and the Senate, and right now we're just talking about the Senate bill, doesn't address the initial concerns they had about costs and availability to uh, insurance. It's not about the quality of our health care or accessibility because anybody can go to an emergency room and get treated. It's about insurance coverage. And uh, neither w the bill in the Senate actually raises costs and still doesn't cover everybody. Mm -hmm. And for them to go through uh, the slaughter procedure you know, to deem a bill to have passed... Well, just can you give me 30 seconds on the, what the heck that is? Well, normally what happens in a reconciliation process is the Senate will, or the House, will pass a bill and then that will go for signing and what they do is once the bill is signed then they basically um, work out c compromises to get a bill they both can agree on mm -hmm. what the house is doing because the, the democrats in the house in particular despise the senate bill 
They don't want to have to vote on it. So they're going to act as if it had passed. Deem it as having passed. They're going passed. to deem it as passed, and they're going to now create um, whatever compromises they think they're going to have to put into this bill, and they're going to trust the Senate to incorporate them into their version later. Uh, it's a complete end around around the, around the Constitution. You had Barack Obama on television yesterday saying how he doesn't care about the process. This was a Brett Baer interview. Absolutely. It was un- it was un- uh, I couldn't uh, believe what I'm watching. For the President of the United States to say that is unconscionable because that basically takes the rule of law on which this country was founded and throws it out the window. And if we see, as we have, that the progressive left and the Democrats, led by Barama, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Harry Reid, are willing to go to these lengths to pass this bill when the American people don't want it, it's not about health care. It's about control. Listen, if, if, if there's a... No, this, is, this is our system. We have a political debate. We hash these things out. We vote up. We vote down. Right. And, then you, and then you live by, you know, what the majority rules. In this That's case, right. it seems like they're just doing an end around. And this isn't about some sort of, you know, debt limit ceiling or something small. We are talking about one-sixth of the economy. We are talking about how our health care is going to be handled for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our family. And That's they right. are doing this on some sort of, you know, a kabuki dance of we're going to deem it to be true. I mean, this is, this is just infuriating. Absolutely. But wait. Al Robinson is here because this is just an echo chamber here. Yeah, it really is. Okay, <laughs> so can you can tell me where I got this wrong and why I should keep I should stop whining? Look, uh, I'm, I mean, no, you're not whining. I mean, you're just you know just peddling the Ridgefield Republican Town Committee talking points. I can respect that. You got a problem with Ridgefield? No, no, I think Ridgefield's great. Well, we keep can saying I, can Ridgefield Republican Party. Can I paint, my, can I paint Park. my house any color in that town? You can paint it whatever you want, unless it's in the historic district, exactly. and then it can be any color as long as it's white. <laughs> I'll have you. I'll, I'll I'll call you up for a job there. Okay. Um, look, I don't, I don't even know where to begin, but let, let's 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 skip healthcare for a second because we can just beat this thing up forever. See, you gotta, he's like Barack Obama with Brett Bear. I don't no, want to talk I'll, about the I'll, process. I, will, I, I don't want to talk. Healthcare. I want to talk about the lady who's wearing her sister's second. dentures. That's what I want to talk about. Any topic. Any look, topic. Here's the thing. You, you, you there's another person who just jumped into the race. For the Republican nomination. Now, how many people you got now? You got um, six. You got Deba Sella, you got Will Gregory, you got the Eastern First Selectman, Thomas Herman, uh, you got yourself, you got Russo, and you got Rick Torres. That's right. How many more people can jump into this race? I mean, the convention's coming up pretty soon. Yep. Isn't it just going to be, a, it's going to be, it's going to be chaos, isn't it? I mean, you got to me. No, it's, it's not. So how's this, how's this going to work out? I mean, We've got a why, strong why, bench. That's right. Well, here, why is there other people coming into this race? There should be at this point. I think there should be like maybe one, two at the most. No, three. because you know why? Because you Democrats, yeah, old blue. Oh, 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 I think oh, we have a guest here. We like to have a nice guest here. We have a guest here. We have a guest. Can he speak for himself? This is live television, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no. Here's here's what's happened. What's going on here? There's there's a perception. There's an opportunity now for someone to take this place. All right. Now. I think I am uniquely positioned among the field of candidates, including Tom Herman, uh, to build a coalition. Because if you look at the field, you've got what I would consider um, sort of your traditional candidates. Dandy Vassell, oh, yeah. so Tom Herman is one of those. He's held elected He's office. Hold right. hold you have the non traditional okay. candidates, which would be Rick Torres, right. Will Gregory, Will and then Gregory you've got myself. Never, have hold, never held office in my life, uh, no political background whatsoever. But the constituency that I'm building, I've gotten RTC endorsements. I've got uh, National Republican Committee endorsements. Uh, not the National Republican Committee, but National Republican Affiliate Committee. You, you Republican picked up the Ridgefield Republican Town Committee. I did get Ridgefield Republican Town Committee. I got the Republican Liberty That's right. Caucus. We're behind Rob. We have executive members of the Norwalk RTC. Okay. And, and our reach is getting much deeper because as I appear in front of these uh, town committees and I tell them what I stand for and, and how I'm going to approach Washington, D.C., they like what I have to say, and they're getting on my bandwagon. Okay. Now, caller, you're on the air. Hey, good evening, Marty. How are you? Good, Bob good. McGuffey. I'm sorry, who's this? Yeah, it's Bob McGuffey, right, Chris? Oh, a- a- excellent. Yeah, do, do you have a question for um, Rob Merkel, or do you want to contribute a- to the discussion? Well, I haven't. I haven't heard the discussion since I'm out of my car. I knew the show was on, so I thought I would. I would touch base. Um, well, we're talking about this health care thing. Do you think it's a good idea that the Democrats that are in charge are going to deem it into law? <laughs> I think it's uh, laughable. I think it's laughable. They have. They have a. Uh, uh, a large majority in Congress. If the bill was so darn good, they'd have everybody behind it, and it would have been enacted long ago. They're doing every gimmick they can to try to 
to try to pass something that they know uh, is uh, not supported by the American people nor by their own caucus. So um, okay. it, it's ludicrous. They're demonstrating what they are to the American people. And in the end, uh, I think they're going to feel the sting of that uh, or the wrath of that probably this year in, in, in the polls if they do manage to push it through. All right. Well, thanks. I appreciate very much your input. Thanks a lot. All right. Have Take a good care. one. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's, well, I, I, yeah. I've got the establishment, and then I've got the grassroots groups. Uh, Bob McGuffey and his group, Right Principles, have endorsed me. I got endorsed oh, okay. by three Tea Party uh, groups. Uh, now, I understand the Tea Party is an amorphous organization, but mm -hmm. this is the first time, to my knowledge, that a Tea Party group has actually gotten behind a candidate. So I have both the grassroots and I have establishment Republican Party. So I'm getting both sides, whereas no other candidate in this field can say that. And it's going to take a coalition to go after Jim Himes. It's that simple. And so, you, you know, a lot of the inside the inside the baseball park people, I want to call them, you know, your, your, your insiders, your DTC people, your delegates, mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are talking about Dan DiBasella. So I, I think it's going to basically come down between you and DiBasella, in my personal opinion. I think these other people you can just mark right off. That's my personal opinion. But so... Let's just get right down to it, and I think you know this also. What distinguishes you, or, or, or what distinguishes you from Dan DiBasella? What is he saying out there that's different from what you're saying, that's attracting more people onto your camp as opposed to his? Uh, well, I think you saw a lot of it on the last show that I was here, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, my fundamental premise is I want to cut federal spending. I don't think we need to ease it down. I don't think we need to have a lower growth rate in federal spending. I think we can actually start to cut day one. Uh, there is waste, there is fraud, uh, there are duplicative programs, there are programs where uh, the federal government should not be involved and the states are handling it much better than the feds are, so why have both? I mean, these are areas where we can start to scale back immediately. And what that translates into are cost savings to the states because unfunded mandates come down to the states from the federal government. That gets pushed to our, our local towns and to our property taxes. So you may say it's a federal issue, but it really affects the states as well. Um, that's the biggest issue. The other thing that people think is, I'm not a politician. I've never been in politics. So what you see is what you get. Uh, I'm not beholden to anyone. And they, they recognize that I'm a fighter. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a business now. I'm on the Entrepreneurs Organization. Uh, it's a global organization of people that have built businesses. We know how to create jobs. I know what it's like to make payroll, hire people. I know what it's like to lay people off and how horrible that feels knowing that their family is impacted. Um, you know, in terms of the insurance fiasco we're looking at now, my premiums have gone up 50% this year. And my wife has a medical condition. I cannot get an individual policy because mm -hmm. she's uninsurable. So I have to keep a business. I have to keep a business policy. Um, I see the machinations that are going on behind the scenes, and people are tired of politicians in general. They want someone they can believe in. They want one of their own, and I'm the one that fits that qualification. I think congressional approval rating right now is 17%. Is that right? Is that the number I heard? If that, they just had a generic poll that came out that showed Republicans are, are leading Democrats by 10 points mm -hmm. on just a generic poll. Uh, so, See, that's why I think, I think Chris Murphy... Is in trouble. Yes. Chris Murphy's in trouble. I think Chris Murphy's in big trouble. Okay. I think Jim Himes is Jim in Himes trouble. Is in great. Pro I mean, he, you you said some polling stuff during that debate. I'm still waiting for that number. No, what, the 35 percent. 35 percent. Whenever you want to email me that, I, I appreciate it. Well, my people will get back to your people. I'm sure they will. On, I got I'm it sure off the internet, will. so you know it's true. <laughs> I'll start doing a counter on my website for you. You're famous. <laughs> okay. How about that? All right. Okay. By the way, that website, Hat City Blog. <laughs> Go to it. Yeah, it's a, It's got some interesting stuff. <laughs> that's right. Um, but no, I, I, that's what I think. And and I think, yeah, I think almost either any way this healthcare thing comes down, I think people know. I mean, this is a little graphic, put the children away. But I remember in a town hall meeting, there was a guy who stood up and said, "Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining." And I think that there's a there's a there's a common sense among the people out there in, in, in America, and they recognize what's going on. Whether you want to reform health care or not, the way it's being done, people are repulsed by it. Right, they, they they just are. You saw Brett Baer had the the leader of the free world, Barack Obama, squirming 
when he was asked about process, do you think this is right, this isn't bipartisan, and, and, and everything else? And I think people yeah. are repulsed by that, yeah, and I think right. they're the only place that they can express their frustration, well, we did it already in, in Massachusetts, that was a nationalized election, did it in, in New Jersey and Virginia, and just wait till November. I'm telling you. Yeah, and and I, think, I think it's going to be one of these sweeping things where people have said, this is ridiculous, it's no longer a, 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 um, a representative form of government, these elitists are up there, and they're just trying to just cram this stuff down our throat, and it's going to raise everyone's taxes, and they're expanding right. the IRS and everything else, and people are going to say, um, no, don't tread on it's, me. Is Chris Murray feeding, feeding you those lines through the Blackberry right there? Chris Murphy? He's Chris, the one going Chris down. Chris Murray. Is no, I'm cut. this is all coming from off, my off own, the top, off, off the, the top, top of my... Right. Uh, well, let, well, let me add let something me, to that yeah. discussion, if you don't mind. Right, um, if these things do pass... There is an outside chance health care bill could pass. I don't personally think it will, but if it does, uh, I am actually working with a coalition of uh, freshman congressmen, potential freshman congressmen, and we will repeal this. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's the whole mindset that once something gets passed in Washington, it's impossible to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Democrats are, are hoping for. Let's just pass the bill. I mean, Nancy Pelosi. It'll become said, a new entitlement. That's right. Everyone will love it. Nancy Pelosi said, we need to pass this right now so we can figure out what's in it outside of the fog of controversy. Exactly that. <laughs> that is, I don't agree with that. I will never agree with that. And the American people don't agree with that. So in November, there will be a referendum in this country where people that are um, true believers in the Constitution of the United States, in the electoral process, in the representative democracy, they will come into office with me and we will re re roll back the damage that this administration is doing. And you can count on it. Uh, right, do do, do you agree with anything we're saying? Do you, do you, I mean, is there any sense of concern that a Democrat would have about the upcoming no, election? I, I got a question, actually. Um, mm -hmm. We've been waiting for this Congressional Budget Office report to come out, and it came yes. out today. Um, let me just read you some data, data off of some of the basic numbers. Uh, the bill, the health care bill, will cost 100, and, according to the CBO, which is nonpartisan, mm -hmm. the, the, the bill will cost $940 billion over the first 10 years and will reduce the deficit by $130 billion during that period. In the second 10 years, uh, 2020 to 2029, it will reduce the deficit by 1.2 trillion. The legislation will cover 32 million Americans, or 95 percent of the legal population. Um, what are you What are your feelings about that? Well, you, you just made my point. It still doesn't cover the entire population, which was part of the hysteria that they were pushing on us to try to get the bill in the first place. Secondly, if you look at the CBO estimates, I know that they've done cost estimates in the past that omitted the cost of the bureaucracy that was going to have to be put in place to actually manage this bill, which uh, I've seen numbers that put this anywhere from uh, 250 to 300 billion dollars. Um, second thing is, if you look at the the numbers that the CBO actually has to begin with and the assumptions they put into it, 1.2 trillion dollar deficit reduction could mean okay, we're expecting the deficit to be 15 trillion. Now it's only going to be 13.8. Uh, to me, uh, it's still an, a massive deficit. We're still spending too much money. But it's saying it's going to reduce it, though. Uh, again, it's, a, it's going to cost four, 940 over the first 10 years, reducing the deficit by 130 during that period. The second 10 years is going to reduce it by 1.2 trillion. Well, I, again, I, I question the numbers. And the reason being is the federal government has a habit of making numbers say what they want to justify their ends. Uh, you know, I live in the world where uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2. And when you run a business, you have to only spend what you take in, or less, ideally, uh, and the government's not doing that. So for them to say that we're going to save money by spending a trillion dollars, I don't buy it. For them to say that we're going to get a half a billion dollars or $500 million in savings out of uh, Medicare and Medicaid without restricting access or without cutting... Um, Waste and fraud, I think. I, I, I don't buy that either. I've never seen the federal government be efficient in any way, shape, or form. So you don't, you don't think the CBO nonpartisan numbers are reliable? I, th I think they're being used uh, to promote an end. And again, I would question whether or not uh, the numbers that uh, substantiate what the cost to administer this program, what is the bureaucratic cost? It's one thing to say this is the, the pure cost in terms of medical services, doctors, patients, etc. But what's the cost of the 111 uh, bureaucracies or panels or commissions that they're going to put together and maintain on, an on a go-forward basis? I want to know if that's in that number. Okay. I mean, my question is, I, and, and, and again, we, I know they've been talking about this for 14 months now, 
so I could have this wrong, but my understanding is they're going to start collecting taxes on this for four years before they, right. they spend penny one in added services or whatever. And so if you collect taxes on something for four years and don't provide any of the services and only have to provide it for the next six years, I think you can come up with a cumulative number that looks pretty rosy. Well, again, and, and I'm just I, saying here, it's just, I'll, I'll read the top of this, this article here. It said, Washington has spent the past week or so waiting for the CBO to release its preliminary estimate of the Senate bill with the reconciliation fixes, which is the reconciliation stuff that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, this is the estimates that they have right here from the CBO. Yeah. I mean, if you want to read it and review it and check it out, it's fine. Okay, I, I just have a fundamental problem with the government getting involved with my health care, the health care of my family, and expanding the role of government. When I see that they're going to expand the IRS and they're going to have enforcement and they're going to force you to buy uh, insurance policies and everything else, none of that sounds very good to me. It, right. it just doesn't. And I defy you to uh, uh, come up with a federal program where at the beginning of the federal program they said this is how much money it's going to save, or this is how much it's going to cost. And that hasn't been multiplied a hundred times That's by the right. time this thing begins. You were at the debate, which by the way, we, I guess we're going to have to save that for next time with the gubernatorial oh, wow. stuff. Wait. Times flies yeah. when you're yelling at each other. <laughs> but uh, but I, I really think that uh, Mark Bowden's analogy of the federal government, like the movie The Gremlins. You know, if you've seen the movie The Gremlins, where all of them, these things just start expanding, and they're all over the place. That's what I think we're unleashing um, with this federalized uh, health care program. And I know, I know because of my uh, relationship with my in-laws and extended family in Canada, and I've seen firsthand what a federalized, uh, um, a government-run health care program, which I know you'll say, that's not what we're talking about here. Well, but no, believe we, me, we've, this we've is had, the, had, this is the camel's milk. We've had, we've had phone conversations about this, and you've been saying that week after week that you've been comparing Canada and the Europeans to this, this thing. And I think this is very misleading, and I, I think you're doing somewhat of a disservice to the public when you say that, because again, and I'll state this again, there is, we're not talking about a single-payer bill here. We're mm -hmm. not talking about government run health care here in this in this program. Um, let you me know, just let me uh, say it, because you're, 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 you're a smart right guy. Here. Um, it, it, we're, we're, we're saying here that, look, the only part of the health care in which there isn't a lot of federal intervention is the market in which individuals who can't get employment-based health coverage buy their own insurance. Or in other words, we, um, if the, if the government is, is talking about some type of takeover, this, this happened a long time ago. Medicare, Medicaid, other government programs already pay for almost half of the Americans' health care, while private insurance pays barely for a third. Um, the rest of it is mostly out-of-pocket out of expenses. The great bulk of private insurance, which is very true because I was in this plan for a very long time, a great bulk of the private insurance that is provided via employee plans. Uh, um, HMOs, stuff like that, mm -hmm. which are both subsidized with tax exemptions and is tightly regulated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you talk about this government takeover of health care and all this yeah. stuff, like if you're on an HMO plan or a POS plan, you're not going to be dealing with this. And the, the government's not going to be seeping into this stuff. Okay, let me, let that's, me just, that's what I've been trying who, to get across who, to you. Who's, that, who's that short congressman from, uh, from Pennsylvania who's always running for president and never has a chance, and he just got a ride on uh, Air Force One? What's his name again? Anyway. Kucinich. Kucinich. Kucinich, okay. Ohio. Well, what was his big thing he really wanted? No, no, what was he, his big he thing? Wanted, he wanted, he's for single payer. Right, okay, now. Well, okay, pair. so what do you think Barack Obama, when they're, you know, having tea up in Air Force he One, voted, are talking he about? He wanted to go, he was voting down the plan because it didn't have a single oh, payer. Oh, but what's he doing now? That. What's he doing now? Look. He's voting for it. And what did he say? Because what this is say? the camel's he, nose Marty, under Marty, the, Marty, under Marty, the tent. This is the beginning. No, it's not. Marty. He said the reasons why behind he was supporting this thing. He said, look, I'm not an all or nothing type of guy. I, it was till he got off to all, 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 all giggles and as smiles as like a schoolgirl coming off of Air Force on One. saying that, look, this isn't what I want, but it's the best I can get. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And again, mm -hmm. let's go back to my point again. You bring up Canada. You bring up single payer. You bring up this stuff over and over again. Okay, you know I'm, I'm stating here that this plan is not single payer. Okay, I can show you. I can show you. Say that it's misleading. Okay, I can show you videotape of Barack Obama speaking to union officials saying, Martin, "I am in favor of a single bill payer right plan." Here, no, that's payer. the beginning. Believe me, that is the beginning. Is this because once the federal payer? government no? gets in the in the is business, no? they'll bankrupt all these dastardly health insurance. There's companies. no there's no public option to this thing. Hold on, we have a we have a guest here. He's not a potted plant. You have two minutes. Here's the 
Hold on. Fundamental thing that we need to keep in mind. You came in the middle of a bad night. <laughs> no, this is, this is, no, this is this family. Is you stay out of this. <laughs> this is exactly where I need to be because this is a debate happening at kitchen tables across this country. Yeah. And people in this district are very concerned about it. And they want someone that can stand up for them. Here's the issue. All right. If this bill were that good and it did all these wonderful things, why are they doing it in secret? Why are they trying to cram it down our throats through legislative chicanery? Why are they not allowing the Republicans at the table to participate in a meaningful way in the negotiations? Why can't they get and why is one it Republican? Republican? And why is this such an urgency that they have to get it done now? This has been an urgency for the last year plus. They've had a supermajority in both houses. There is no reason why the Democrats have not been able to get this bill passed except for the fact that it has been such an abomination and the American people do not want it. It's that simple. We have tried to do this a number of times in the past. R listen to Ronald Reagan's 1964 speech, uh, convention speech with nominating Barry Goldwater. You, all you have to do is change Vietnam for Afghanistan and Iraq, and it's the same thing. The progressives trying to put through a government takeover of health care. This is what's happening right now. The American people don't want it. We need free market solutions to get us back on track. And the one things that are drivers of these costs, medical malpractice tort reform, is not on the table. Why? Well, okay. Rob, if they like what they heard, how can they get in touch yeah. with you? MerkelforCongress.com. MerkelforCongress.com. Thank you for joining us once again for this mud rustling session that we call <laughs> Ideas of Work and Beyond. Uh, appreciate Al Robinson, his, his, his input. Rob Merkel, appreciate you coming in. Pleasure as always, Especially on a difficult night for a Notre Dame grad. Oh. And, uh, join I'll us cry next in my cornflakes. And, and, and <laughs> join us next week. I'm not sure what we're going to be talking about, but it will be interesting, and we'll know if we're going to have this socialized or on the road to socialized medicine. Yeah, we'll know by go. then. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Ideas at Work and Beyond.